this is a video note, a kind of experimental uh, operation here, but a video note on using QTVLM to investigate um, storm avoidance maneuvering. And uh, we will do it using the simulation mode of QTVLM uh, with an AIS target, which we're going to just choose one and then uh, call it the storm. And then we're going to go out in front of it and then try to avoid it. And the way the QTVLM um, simulation works is it will, you have the option of turning on live AIS wherever you're doing your simulation. So I've set up the simulation. That's, we've discussed that other places right now. Here is my vessel right here. And this is the storm I'm going to use. This is a storm. This cargo ship here is moving 11.8 knots. 11, it's moving 11.8 at uh, 300. That's its direction. That's the cargo. That's the storm. And uh, I'm going to get in. And here's my vessel right here. And so I want to get, and I'm, the simulation's turned on. I'm going six knots in, in this direction here. Um, that's a me here. Okay, this is a target that's, we're, hopefully it's going to be out of the way here. It's another AIS target in this neighborhood. We're off the coast of California uh, at the moment. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so step one, step one, let me just do this kind of trick here. I'm going to just to draw a line, I'm going to use this barrier function, and I'm going to just click here, and I just want to draw the where this guy's going so I know where to put myself. Oh, oh wait, I did it wrong. Okay, so there, stop, okay. And now escape. So that's there. So what I'm going to do here is put myself out in front of this guy. So and but everything's going to go away in a minute. So what I'm going to do here is just put a mark here. Uh, this is a temp mark, so I know where to go. Okay. So now what I want to do? Let's see if I can move myself. I think the simulation's running. I can't move myself while the simulation's running. So I have to shut off the simulation, which I'm doing with uh, option S. And that shuts down the simulation. Now I can either go over there or I can just drag it over and put my boat right here. My boat's going to be right there. And then presumably that other guy's live. He's going to come back on in a minute. So I'm going to then delete this mark. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I've got that set up. And now... Um, what I want to do is the angle, this guy was moving 11.8 knots at 300, at 300. So I want to go, for my optimum angle, I want to go the angle alpha forward. Uh, let's see if I have a picture of that here. Uh, Oh, okay, yes, here it is from our textbook. I, here's the storm. I want to go an angle forward of the direction the storm's going where this angle alpha you could either get from this table or the actual formula is, and I don't see the formula in the book. I, I probably should put it in there. But it's sine of alpha. Sine of alpha equals the, uh, my speed over the storm speed my speed over the storm speed. So that's what, I have to, that's what I have to calculate here now. And it's forward of the beam. So let's get alpha. Alpha is here. And I am going six knots divided by, and that last I looked was 11.8 on that one, uh, divided by 11.8 equals. And that's the, si that's the angle whose side... That's the sign of the angle I want to know. So I do second to get the sine minus one, and then click that as 30.5 degrees. So that's 30 degrees, say. Okay, so I want to go 30 degrees uh, uh, forward of the perpendicular. Now, that boat is headed in direction 300. So perpendicular direction is 300 minus 90 equals. So that's a 210, and I want to go forward of that 30. So I do plus 30 equals, and that's 240. So I want to head in direction 240, uh, which I can do. I turn the simulator on and do that. So I want to go 240. So we turn on the simulator again, option S. Uh, let's see what happens. And hopefully our t storm comes back. These are internet AIS, so they take a while. That's why it's not safe to use it as for navigation, because they take a while to update and so forth. But hopefully this um, this uh, 
ship will come back. Uh, but I want to go. I want to go to course 240. So I might as well come around to that course. And I'm turning left here. This is the rudder. Okay. So that oh, there's AIS starting to pop in there. And then uh, oh, there's my guy. So I want 240. Uh, let's see, uh, AIS, let me turn a little bit more. Oh, I'm, okay, 260, uh, 257. Uh, let, I'm gonna have to check everything here. It looks like I'm, okay, 240, right? That's, okay, that's pretty good. I could go maybe, okay. All right, there's 240. Now, in principle, that angle that I'm going is 30 degrees uh, forward of the beam. I mean, forward of perpendicular to this. Okay, and so that would show then, according to this, the this ship, see, this, this ship is actually headed a little bit down here. Now, you know, because it's got, a C, it's got a COG predictor right on this, and you see it's going to be here, and I'm going to be out here. But let's just see what this says. This a Test. Oh, test. Why does that say test? Um, test. Okay, let me, there's another way we can look at this data. Let's go up here to view AIS target list. And the one where, oh, that's a different, uh, I don't see our ship. It was called, uh, I thought it was called Al something. Um, okay, well, this is just, again, this is an exercise in using this method. So if we run across some little snags, that's always helpful. Let's see if we can figure out um, what's going on here. Now, I know that I can't uh, do anything with this showing. So I've got to show that. So, but look, it tells me where these targets are. Here's a COG 300. It looks like it's this guy. It says unknown name. Now, oh, here's what the trick is. The name, some, some AIS data is updated every minute or so, and some, up, some AIS data is not updated very often. I'd have to go back and look exactly when some of this other data is updated. But um, this is probably our guy, but we haven't gotten the AIS signal that's got this metadata in it, like the name of the ship. I think it was called One Owl or something like that. Okay, but anyway, this is our guy here. And uh, we can confirm that. Let's see how far away he is. He says 13.3 miles away. So let's just confirm that. I can put on here, here's us. I right click, I put on the ruler tool, and then I come back here. Let's see, 12, well, okay, 13, yeah. So that's our guy right here. Oh, there's one owl. His name is, he's, okay, let's go back and see that. So that's what happens. We have an article on AIS that, oh, that's not what I want, cancel. Uh, view AIS target data, and there's one owl. And that's what it is. The position data is updated often. The name and metadata, where I'm going and where I've been, that sort of information comes in less frequently. But now it's there and it's permanent. Okay, so that's good to go. All right, now what do we got? This is a really nice uh, example here. So let's, re let's see if this will show up. Oh, you know what? Maybe my line's on top of it. Oh, no, there it shows. There it shows. Um, there it shows. And that says it's 11.4 and it's 303. So 11.4 at 303. So let's just see if that makes any, that's not gonna make much difference, but let's just do it. Um, no, wait, clear, clear, clear. So we want six divided by 11.4 equals, and then I want, uh, I want arc sine, so that's second, and then there's sine. Or, or you can get it from that table. So that's 31.7 degrees. So I have to then go back and take 303, it's heading, minus 90, that's the perpendicular direction, and then I want to go forward, uh, 31.732, so plus 32 equals, so my heading wants to be 245. So when you're monitoring these storms, you, you don't, well, you don't get this kind of picture, 
right, of a storm that's 100 miles away. Again, we're, we're up close scale. But you get a report every, every few hours, every, every several hours, you'll get the location of the storm over the radio and the direction it's moving. That's not uh, that. That's given on the radio or your nav, uh, various reports. Okay, but I want uh, now 245. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to 245. I'm going to go up just a little bit here. Um, whoop, too much. Okay. Oh, I have I am not I'm not driving my boat. Well, you'd never drive a boat to one degree or something, but. I'm just trying to get this since we're illustrating a point. I'm trying to get it right. Okay, there's 245. And you see that what's going to happen now. Okay, so what's our CPA and information here? The CPA is 6.9, is 6.9 nautical miles. And that's going to happen in 67 minutes. Okay, 67 minutes. Now, I think we can we can show that if this boat's going eleven now it's eleven point four, but this is where this is where this ship this t storm one owl our storm our our tropical storm he's going to be right here he's going to be right here in uh, in um, what is it sixty seven minutes, and then we are going to be let's see, I think that dot is uh, is where we're going to be. Well, that would mean that would be, let's see, uh, six six 6.9 miles. So let me just do this, a ruler tool. And then down here is, uh, yeah, see, 6.9, exactly. So when, when this ship, when this storm is here, then we will be here. And the, and the uh, separation, the, separa the, the CPA will be 6.9 miles. Now, here's the point that we make. We're arguing that this is the best angle to go. So if I turn like 20 degrees to the right and measure it, 20 degrees to the right, that would be uh, 265. So let's go, let's go to 265. Uh, 250, 260, 24. Okay, let me stop there. Now, let's look for what the CPA is. And the CPA now is 5.9. You see, it was 6.9. Now it is 5.9. So going that far forward is not the right angle. Now let's come back to what we, we say it's supposed to be. I've got to turn, uh, turn uh, the other direction. To down to two. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Oh, 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 oh. I've got to go down to 245, which was that was our right angle, I think. 245. Okay, something like well, there's oh, come on. This really doesn't. I, I'm just I don't have if, click. Click control. Okay, so there we go. That's that. Now you see the CPA is well six point five. Everybody's course may have changed a little bit, but it's six point five. But now let me turn on around another twenty degrees. So let's go down to like two twenty five. Okay, let me go down here to oh, there's two twenty five. So that's now twenty degrees to the other side right to the other side now what's our cpa our cpa now is uh, 6.1 uh and it was 6.9 yeah we're not we're not tuned up exactly but you see it's going down uh, i could recheck everything here what's his course and speed um his course and speed is 11.4 at 301 so he's changed course very slightly but anyway that's the point you get the best angle you get the best angle by taking you go purpose you, you look which way the storm is going your your gut reaction is go perpendicular to that go perpendicular to his path right 
and that's your gut reaction on which way to go to get the to be the safest. But in reality, if you go a little bit forward of that, then that gives you more time. You see, you get more time, and then that way it makes it a little bit bigger. But you can go. But there's an optimum, and that optimum is that that sine angle, the degrees that you go forward, you take the uh, you take your boat speed divided by the storm speed. And then you take, uh, then you do the arc sine, the arc sine of that ratio, and that will give you the angle forward, which will be the optimum. And then the uh, when you do that, uh, let's just go back. What was that about? That was like 245. Then what you will find is that the uh, that the boat will be the closest, the, the storm will be the closest to you when it crosses your stern. Uh, 245 okay something like that and, and you see here here's that now I don't we have to if you optimize this and put these exact numbers in I think it'll come out rigorously right here's 11.4 at 301 okay I'll stop there that illustrates the point thank you